being here this morning. Uh, my name is Kelsey Maldonado. I am a public health nurse um, with the Department of Health. I am here with Heidi Talgoshi, who is the public health nursing supervisor, as well as Corey Lejano, owner and pharmacist of Maliola Pharmacy. Um, so we're very happy to be here today to um, to do a presentation on fall prevention. And then after my presentation is done, we are very fortunate to have Corey here to um, answer any questions you may have about medications. Uh, he's a very busy man, so we are very grateful that he was able to make it here today. <laughs> um, so I will go ahead and get started with my presentation. Um, I'm going to start off by playing a quick video. I figure out how to um show it on the get it to show on the screen. Let me. Okay, we are not able to play the video, um, so I'll just go to the next slide. Okay, so just to kind of, um, the key takeaways from this video, this video was about a senior kind of sharing um, the, um, how important it is for fall prevention, because um, it's a common problem across the state. I think the statistic was over 800 um, people fall, seniors fall every year, and that uh, results in them going to the hospital, and some of them never go back. So the video was kind of just showing how important it is and how much of a problem it is for seniors um, in our community and also nationwide. Um, so it also talked about four ways to prevent falls. Uh, one of the ways is to have your medications reviewed. Um, so it's really important to make an appointment with your PCP or your pharmacist to have them review your um, review the medications you're on. Uh, oftentimes, some of the medications you're on can result in dizziness, which could lead to a fall. Um, there's often times also where you're seeing multiple doctors, specialists, as well as your PCP, and they're all um, ordering medications for you. Not, you know, not always do they, they don't always know 
what medications you're on and some have drug interactions. So when Corey speaks, you can ask him um, specific, he can get more into that. Um, the next thing they talked about was um, getting your vision checked annually. So it's important to have your vision checked um, at least once a year. Uh, maintaining good vision helps with balance and safety. Uh, then another thing they talked about was exercising and staying active. So balance and strength are essential to preventing falls. And then lastly, uh, make your home safer by removing fall hazards. So they talked about, you know, the importance of keeping your home clutter free, especially in the hallways. Um, a lot of times when you're older, you, um, you need a, you can't see as well. So they recommend that you brighten your lights in your house um, just so that it's easier for you to see. Also putting um, lights like in certain areas like the bathroom or hallways so that you can get from your room to the bathroom, um, especially if you're up at night, um, that's very important. Um, if you want information, more information or resources, you can call the Department of Health Injury Prevention Program. Their number is on the screen, 733-9202. Um, you can also visit www.nogethurt.hawaii.gov um, for a home safety checklist, as well as um, more resources and information. Um, so now I'm kind of going to talk about um, the class that we offer. So this is a um, free program for Kupuna Living in the Community. It's a free class that we offer here on Maui. It's funded by Maui Memorial Medical Center, which is our local trauma center here on Maui. Um, Maui Memorial works with community providers such as us, the Department of Health, Public Health Nursing, as well as Ventura Physical Therapy to host these classes um, on a routine basis. So they're offered throughout the year um, here on Maui, and it's completely free because of the hospital's funding. So as a trauma center, um, Maui Memorial Medical Center reviews the data annually. Um, they look at data from patients who come into their trauma center and um, specifically who come into the hospital or the emergency room with traumatic injuries. And then they kind of look for trends in this data. And as you can see in the bar graph, um, what the past several, several years have consistently shown is that falls are by far the number one cause of traumatic injuries that re result in folks seeking treatment at the hospital. Um, the next is road-related injuries, but as you can see by the gar bar graph, um, falls are significantly higher. So they recognize that this is a real problem. Um, and so they decided to kind of look at ways to um, help prevent the numbers from growing. Um, here's more data on the, the information they collected through the hospital. Um, and it shows that 72% of those who fell were 65 years and older. Um, they found that 80% of the fall patients at the tr trauma center were Hawaii residents. So, I mean, I think a lot of times they think it's visitors that are falling, but 80% are Hawaii residents. Um, and then 61% of those who fell, they fell at home. So that's what we're finding is most people, if they are having a fall, especially seniors, it's in their own homes. Um, but the silver lining about falls at home or really any falls at all is that they are preventable. So there are steps you can take to reduce your risk from falling. Um, and the things we talk about in the class, the fall prevention methods that we talk about, um, they have been proven to work. So there is good, there is hope. Um, so to try and prevent falls from happening in the first place, um, My Memorial Medical Center's Injury Prevention Task Force, which is funded by the Trauma Center, um, they brought this evidence-based program to Maui. Um, it was created by Maine Health and other partners in aging. It started in 2006, and it's been 
um, around and it's been successful throughout the nation um, since then. In 2021, we started doing the classes here on Maui. So that's kind of the background of the, you know, why the program was started here. They just recognized that, you know, it's a real need and they wanted to do something that to help the problem. And they found that they found this evidence-based program, which has been successful so far. So I have another video to show, but I don't know if it will work. I'm just going to try. Hey, it's not working. So I can maybe I can send out the give the video links and then um you can watch it later. But this is um this video is about a clip of someone who attended the class and they started off, you know, they had health issues and they had mobility trouble. I forget exactly what I think it was difficulty walking. Um she joined the class and um she just had tremendous growth she went from not being able to walk on her own using relying on a cane and walker um, and then going through this class and she was able to get rid of her cane and walk around safely um, do exercises so it just kind of showed her story and um, how she benefited from the class and then I think she ended up becoming a coach so now she is um, a matter of balance coach Okay, so the evidence-based part of matter, matter balance is that it has been shown to change behaviors and attitudes and get people to exercise more. So in all of the, not in all of the classes, there's eight classes, but from the third class to the eighth class, all the classes start off with a short exercise portion, maybe 20 to 30 minutes every class. Um, and you get a manual with all the exercises so you can do it on your own at home if you want. Um, but we do it together as a class and um, most of the exercises help with balance and strength for your legs, which are important for fall prevention. Um, so who should attend the class? It's ideal for those who don't currently have an exercise routine. Uh, we've had p participants in the past who go to swimming two days a week and then to the gym three days a week and then do Tai Chi and yoga. So, I mean, I think they still benefit from the class, but ideally if you're someone who's new to exercise or maybe haven't been exercising for years, um, it's a good opportunity for you to participate and kind of learn new exercises, get ideas from other participants in the group, you know, what other classes are out there to do, um, or start a buddy system where you can, or a walking group or things like that. Um, and then people, it's also really beneficial for people who don't go out and do things because they have a fear of falling. So for people that maybe fell in the past or know someone who fell or had a, fall, a spouse that fell down and are kind of like, you know, oh, I'm not so strong anymore. I should just stay home. Um, it's really helpful for, for those kind of, people because we kind of help plan and say like okay maybe you're not as strong as you are maybe you just need to ask for help or maybe you need to use a cane so we don't want you to you know just stay in your room all day um, that's actually doing a disservice to your body by staying in your room all day we want you to be active and you know as long as you're safe but the idea is to have a prolong your quality of life for as long as possible as well as you're independent so or if you're if you fall in that category, it's a great class for you to attend. Question? Yes, so it's it's offered um, nationwide. I'm not exactly sure. most states do offer this class. Oh, so far no, it's just Maui. Yeah. Yes. Question in the back. Oh, I'll get to that at the end. So we have one coming up in October. But we try to we're trying to do it so that there's um throughout the year. So it and different locations, but I'll get to that at the end. So um central to the class, there are six pillars, so I'll go over what those are. So the first is that falls are a real problem. So 
Um, ultimately, the goal of this class is to prevent people from falling, but we do recognize that, um, you know, falls do happen. So we also do want to um, prepare you if you do have a fall. Um, this is typically a burning question for many people, and um, this is an uh, anticipated day for a lot of our participants. We usually try to have a physical therapist or an occupational therapist um, come to our class this day and kind of uh, do a demonstration on how to fall. If you do have to fall, how to protect your head um, so that you don't, you know, you want to protect your head. And then also if you do fall and you aren't injured, how to get up safely um, using furniture or things around your house so that you can get up to a safe position and then call for help or wait for help if you need to. So this is um, one of our classes. Uh, this is our occupational therapist from the hospital, but she's kind of demonstrating how to get up um, using the chair. Um, the next is that falls are a shared fear. So no matter the age and no matter your ability, um, it doesn't matter really your starting place. If you're, we have had people, participants that were in wheelchairs that were able to gain something from the class. Um, it doesn't matter if you've never exercised before. We've had um, 70 to 90 plus year olds who have attended our class who have um, reported positive changes. So... Just keep that in mind. Um, the next thing is regular exercise is the key ingredient to preventing falls. So it's recommended that you um, do at least 30 minutes of exercises most of the most days of the week. Um, and your exercise should consist of um, strength, flexibility, balance, and endurance. Those are all key um, components, and you want to make sure you kind of get a mix of all of those. And like I said earlier, every class, um, well, most of the classes, we start off doing exercises as a group together that mostly uh, focus on um, strength and balance exercises. Um, this class does not um, have Tai Chi, but we are starting to do Tai Chi classes at Kaunoa. I mean, sorry, our class that we have right now is at Hale Mahaolu upcountry, the one by Longs. Um, but there is a, a, a lot of requests for us to do Tai Chi. So we've been having um, Dr. Pang has led a few upcountry. It was really popular. So we're thinking about adding more. So maybe we can talk to um, Kaunoa and seeing if that's something they're interested in us um, providing at this site, because it seems like there's a lot of um, people that are interested in doing Tai Chi. But the exercises we do, some half of them are seated and then the other half is standing up. It's nothing too strenuous. It's not like a cardio class. You're not getting like breaking a sweat. Or you're not really like sweating or running. Uh, most of them are sitting and it's mostly working on just lower body strength as well as um, balance. Um, and then research shows everyone can go stronger through increased activity. So you can, no matter your starting place, you can always be stronger than you were yesterday if you just do something. So everyone's starting place is different, but everyone can get stronger. Uh, the next one is exercise plans and all and other fall prevention strategies must be personal and practical. So for the the this class, um, the lead matter balance coaches, they're really more just facilitators of the class. They're not really, I mean, we have a curriculum that we follow and we are teaching the class, but um, we're more, we're acting more as facilitators. Uh, much of the class is group discussion and group problem solving. Um, just, it's, you know, you get close to your peers, you're there with the same people every week and then you're kind of it's kind of tailored to the group specific needs um some have pets and they have we need a problem solve you know how they can safely walk their pets and others um it's travel so it's really tailored to the specific group and i think that's why participants um really enjoy it they get to know the people they're with or you, a lot of people do it with their friends um, so I think that's one of the benefits of the group is working with a close group um, and meeting every week and kind of figuring stuff out together. 
And then the next thing the class talks a lot about is being assertive. So being assertive is being safe. Um, and sometimes that means asking for help. A lot of um, participants, you know, they don't want to ask for help. They feel like they're being maybe a burden to their family or they don't want to waste their doctor's time because they know they're busy. But it's important to being assertive is being safe. So not speaking up is only doing a disservice to yourself. Um, and it could in the long run, it could end up hurting you, um, whether you're not telling your doctor you had a fall and ask, or whether you're not asking him about a medicine you have um, questions about. Um, so it's being assertive is not being a burden. It's ultimately just looking out for your own safety and your health. And then responsibility. So um, we can tell you during class, you know, what you should be doing. You should be exercising. You should be assertive, speak up. Um, your doctors can tell you you should be taking this medicine or following this diet. But ultimately, um, you know, you're accountable for your own choices. So it falls on you to actually um, do the work and make the changes. Um, so. So this is um, just a chart with the pre versus post matter balance survey results. Um, so as you can see, so the light blue is the percentage of participants that showed improvement. And then the gray is um, participants that did not improve. And then the dark blue is they were already, you know, doing their exercises. They didn't have a fear of falling. So those are the ones that were already good. So as you can see, um, how much do you exercise per week? 54% showed an improvement in that. Um, I can increase my physical strength, 69%. I can find a way to, to protect myself if I fall, 73. And I can find a way to reduce fall, 77. So we usually get um, good feedback from the class, basically. People have shared that they've um, learned a lot and you know it's helped them either decrease their fear of falling or it's kind of encouraged them to exercise and be more active or speak up and ask for help um, and then this one is just a bar graph on the class evaluations that we got um, so as you can see um, most people would recommend it a lot of people recommend their friends um, to join the participate in the class and most people say they you know their time was well spent so after, because of that feedback we want to try and do more classes so overall we get good feedback so far people find it helpful and beneficial uh, so this is just class information um the class is there's eight for every course there is eight two-hour courses and so it happens there's one class every day every week one class a week for eight weeks um and then it's totally free because it's funded by my memorial medical center and like i said earlier these classes are being hosted by either the hospital department of health public health nursing or Ventura Physical Therapy um, that we might expand. The plan is to expand to get more people or agencies trained so that they can facilitate these classes. Uh, the coaches are not required to be physical therapists or registered nurses, um, but right now, most of the um, classes are being coached by registered nurses and physical therapists. But the intent of the class is that people that participate um, who are interested uh, in coaching the classes, they could eventually coach classes on their own. Um, and then our next class, if you are interested in signing up for class, you can call or text the number on the screen, 264-1082. This is our flyer for our most recent class, and there still is space to sign up. So this class will be on Wednesdays at the hospital um, the first day is October 2nd, and it's going to run through November 20th. If you are interested, we prefer you be able to come to all eight classes if possible, but you do have to come attend at least six of the eight classes. Um, so if you're interested, you can call or text this number. And if you aren't able to make it to this class, you can still take down this number, and we're planning on doing 
another um starting another class in january or february oh yes so the number is two six oh eight oh eight two six four one zero eight two So for these classes, this class is a uh, in-person class. Um, if there is a, there is an option to do it Zoom, but this one is in-person. So if you're interested in a Zoom option and we get like enough people, then we can do it via Zoom. So still take down the number and you can um, offer. Yes. Um. Um, you can, I'll just try and call and text. The lead person is Cameron Rogers. So she is um employee of the hospital, the trauma care center. Um, you can ask her if you, if you, if she thinks you would benefit from this class. Oh, okay. Um, so this is, you can try this email address. If not, I can give you my um, phone number. Did you do that recently? Because I know she's um away on vacation, so she wasn't able to be here today. But oh, uh, okay. Maybe try email this email address. I know she's um off on vacation right now, but email this number, and or I can give you my number. Okay. So that is all for my presentation. Um, does anyone have any questions before I hand it over to um, Corey Lejano from Maoliola Pharmacy to answer any questions you might have about um, medications? Because medications um, is a big component to fall prevention. OK, I will hand it over to Corey. Oh, do you have a question? Um, possibly. So I would call the number. We've had people that were vision impaired and we were able to do like make accommodations. We have not had anyone who was hearing impaired, but we may be able to make accommodations. Okay. Oh, question. Gov. I'll double check, but I believe it was no get her dot gov. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. So the question was about um, pets and safety of pets. So that's a common theme that actually comes up um, during our classes, whether it's walking the pet and, you know, they're too strong or too fast and they trip um, or just having cats or other pets, you know, running around and tripping in the home. So we do kind of discuss different solutions for that. Our occupational therapists offer some good ideas about that. But I mean, like I said, it's the participants' responsibility, so we can give suggestions. I keep them in a separate room, but some just prefer them, you know, in their bed. So it's at the end of the day, it's up to them to make the decision. But we do discuss um, pets. Yes, the web address. Yep, go ahead.
I'm not familiar with judo, but maybe we can have you um, do a presentation at one of our classes, a demonstration. <laughs> but yeah, um, there's also some participants that also do, I forget what it's, yoga, chair yoga. And she demonstrated how she was taught to properly get up. So that was people find it really helpful especially people that um have fallen in the past so thank you for sharing Wow, Th thank you for sharing. Yes, up here. Um, I think keeping your bones strong. So that's why we recommend a lot of strength training um, exercises, especially keeping your lower body strong. Um, as for specific dietary changes, I mean, you could ask your doctor what they recommend if it's um, different things to change in your diet that you're eating to increase your bone health um, or vitamins or um, other, what do you call it? Supplements. Or ask Corey, he's smarter than me. <laughs> okay, if no other questions, I'm gonna turn it over to Corey Vejano, our pharmacist from Maliola. Mahalo. Well, thank you all for allowing me to be here. Um, I have a, a few disclaimers. Uh, yes, I, I am a pharmacist by day, um, but I think first and foremost, I think it's really important to um, think, congratulate yourselves. I didn't know that this event started at seven and just the simple fact that you all are still here uh, is very encouraging to all of us as healthcare providers, as health educators, because you guys all are taking an active role in you know, promoting your own health and, and quality of life. So thank you all very much. That, that gives me motivation to, to be here and speak with you today. So I don't have an actual agenda. I don't have a PowerPoint, um, but I would like to provide a little bit of um, clarity or, or any type of um, assistance that I can in regards to medications. Because chances are, how many of us here in this room are taking medications? Ah, chances are that one of those medications may be increasing your risk for falls, uh, which uh, unfortunately, as we, we know that majority of the medications that we take are what we call synthetic. So they're medications that our bodies aren't accustomed to or, and, and will elicit a response. And if that response is to lower our blood pressure or if that response is to help our blood sugars, it may ultimately have side effects. And one of the common side effects to many of the medications could be 
drowsiness um, or um, lethargy or tiredness, which could increase our risk for falls. So that being said, I don't want to open the floodgates, but if there are any questions, yes, of course, back in the back. You, get, you have your theme music, perfect. Go for it. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. My mother takes the exact same medicine for the exact same indication. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. So, she, so um, our wonderful par participant in the back, she takes a medication called propranolol for essential tremors. And it's actually a, a medication that indication is off label, um, but it does affect heart rate. And so sometimes when you're taking a new medication or you're being a, a given a medication and prescribed by your doctor and it's specific to our heart, it may work too well. And so that's what leads to what's called hypotension or low blood pressure, which could, which could lead to dizziness and drowsiness and ultimately falls. And so, yes, and she asked about interactions. So that's something that's really important as you uh, navigate your, you know, your, your uh, health journey is to know that there are interactions. So that means that there are things that will clash and may potentiate certain side effects. So whenever you add a medication, whenever you take a medication off of your medicine regimen, you should always check in with your health providers to make sure that everything is okay. Um, so there's a lot of medications that could potentially interact with her propranolol um, that could increase her risk of hypotension or falls. So yes, that's a loaded question, but I would have to kind of look through your other medications as well. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yes. So as a pharmacist, I put the pharmacist hat on right now. We pay for these really expensive like softwares and apps and stuff. Come, let us use it because at least we feel okay when we spend all this ridiculous money. And we can run all of these interaction tools with your supplements. So a lot of supplements, you know, they have increased risk of bleeding, uh, increased risk of dizziness, increased risk of diarrhea or constipation. And a lot of people don't understand that. They see it on the TV and they're like, oh yeah, I think this is something good for me. Turns out that one of the, the herbs inside there actually will increase your risk of bleeding. And so just bring it, bring it all. We call them brown bag events. Um, so that's something that we did, you know, many, many years ago, but um, something that our organization tries to do annually and you throw everything you have in a brown bag and bring it and we go through each one, one at a time. So it's something that, that I definitely recommend you doing. Yes. Yes, so unfortunately, remember, so I would say majority of the medications that you have in your in your cabinet or in your pill box, they are synthetic, which means that they are foreign to your body. And so unfortunately, sometimes there are really adverse reactions when you're when it is introduced to your body, whether that's oral or whatever. And, and that includes that specific. That's the loaded question as well, because I, I agree. So I have, there's a special place in my heart for traditional and complementary medications or alternative medicine, right? So again, you have to make sure that you are aligning yourself and your health providers with your own health goals. And so if your health provider is not aligned with your own health goals, be your best health advocate and find a, a better one or one that aligns with, with you. So yes, I mean, that's a very loaded question. I don't want to, I don't want to get in trouble, but great question. So always, so, so in order for medicine to be your best advocate, you should always ask a few questions. If your doctor's like, ah, I think you got to start taking metformin. So the first 
question you should always ask is, is this absolutely necessary? And you ask your, ask your provider or your prescriber this. And if they can give you a, a good answer, then you're okay. And then the second question is, what happens if I choose not to take it? And if they can honestly answer those two questions, then you can consider maybe taking the medication. So be your, be your own best health advocate and, and choose to ask these questions because they're tough questions, but a lot of doctors now they're in a routine, right? They see the numbers and they're, oh, you're getting this. Oh, you're getting this. So ask the questions. Excellent question. Thank you. Follow up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so there are, again, so there's a, there's a whole spectrum of providers, right? There are the providers who are going to just check the box and, yep, you want this? Perfect. Here, take it. But then there's, there's, there's a whole spectrum, right? There's different types of providers who have their own different professional goals. And so if you can find the right provider who feels like, you know, they align with what you believe to, to be the best interest of your health, then that's really what it comes down to. And there are providers on this island who are, are excellent. So, yes. I have a question. Mm -hmm. So what I've seen is many times individuals, they don't get, they, they go on their own and they don't know what kind of question to ask or how to ask, or even their, um, even their doctor. Um, and then and sometimes they'll say, oh, but the pharmacist just give me the medication. So they get really mixed up like, so should my doctor be telling me about the medication or should the pharmacist be confirming the medication? Mm -hmm. And then they go, oh, but they gave me this and then I have to take this, you know? So it seems to be, um, um, yeah, it's that, it's that missing support mm -hmm. for that individual um, between the doctor and it's hard because a lot of them don't know how to advocate or speak up and mm -hmm. ask, you know, yep. and then they fall into that, um, that part of um, their, you know, over medicating. So how do you, how do you, because a lot of times they'll go, well, I don't know if I should ask my doctor or, or the pharmacist. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of questions on that. Yes. So excellent question. So that actually falls on us healthcare providers. So there's a disconnect between you know, the primary care providers or the specialists and the pharmacists, right? And that disconnect has unfortunately become something that has led to issues and confusions for patients. And so my recommendation is to know your doctors, know your specialists, but know your pharmacists. It wasn't a long time ago to, to before where we, I, I knew my pharmacist when I was growing up and, it, and now, you know, the turnover is so high, but if you can build a relationship that pharmacist will make sure they go out of their way to be like, hey, this medicine looks very similar to the one that this specialist just, just let, let me let me call and let me let me advocate for you, right? So build the choose to build a relationship. And you can even ask whatever pharmacy you go to, be like, hey, what's the name of the pharmacist that's on duty today? I wanna I wanna build relationships with this person. So that's on us. So that's definitely on us. Yes. Are there any pharmacists that are on in the EMR that the PCPs are on? So that's a tough one as well. So her question was regarding um, the electronic medical records, right? So unfortunately, there's multiple organizations who sell software for EHRs, electronic health records. The hospital has one, your doctor has one, we have one. And if we all don't have the same one, it becomes an obstacle and a barrier for us to get the updated and proper records. So the goal, the ultimate goal is that everyone be on the same EHR and all these EHR organizations know that. And so they increase their prices and kind of price out certain people, which unfortunately we're not there yet, but ideally we want to have the, you know, straight from you get x-rays at the hospital, you get treated at your PCP straight to your pharmacy. The United States is not there yet because there's too many people competing for all the different funding. So but that would be definitely the ideal situation. So yes, good, good question. Wow. Any other questions? Yes. I was having some issues and I went, oh, I went to my um, PCP 
and she requested a pharmacist review. So actually it was very positive. The pharmacist called me, wanted a list of my medications and everything. Um, so I gave him a detailed list with times, dosages, including any supplements and over-the-counter things. Mm -hmm. And so I had been told to take vitamin D and then during the pandemic, take zinc. And he goes, why are you taking this large amount of D? And I go, well, you know, I went to the store and bought it. And he says, you know, your vitamin D levels are this. You don't need this high of amount. Same with vitamin B12, same with zinc. So I guess in my mind, we're always worried about medications and think OTCs are harmless. But it was actually the OTCs that were causing my issues. Absolutely. I'm, I'm really not asking a question. I'm just blabbing. No, thank you for that. So <laughs> I can tell you this. A lot of people take vitamins and supplements and over-the-counter products. My word of caution, there are four vitamins that everyone, everyone thinks you, can't, you can, can't have enough vitamins, right? Actually, you can. There are four different vitamins that are really important for you to monitor if you don't need them because they're stored in our fat. There are, there are vitamins that are water soluble that you can take them. If your body doesn't need them, it will excrete them normally. But vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin K, and vitamin E. These four vitamins, they actually are stored in different places in our bodies that if we take too much of them, they'll cause more harm than good. So when you're, when you're taking your multivitamins or a lot of other supplements, these super supplements that are all over the, the, um, the TVs, they have these fat-soluble vitamins that are really dangerous if we take too much and we don't need them. So, so thank you for that comment. The four is vitamin A, vitamin E, vitamin D, and vitamin K. A, E, D, K. I should make a word. Oh, attic. Perfect. Yes. Yes. So my doctor, my PCP, my care physician, I, I love working with my PCP. Before my appointments, they ask for black, uh, lab, lab work. Mm -hmm. my blood drawn, and I, I hate needles. But the doctor said it's important to, to, in order to know the different levels inside my blood. So I, I get that done about every six months. I've gotten used to that. So I'll get my blood work done. Bless you. And a week later, I'll go to my appointment, and um, there'll be a printout, and I'll, I'll the doctor will tell me what vitamins I might not need to take anymore, things I can remove, my my medicine list. So I'm really thankful for my, my PCP first, asking for that lab work to be done. And then we can look over the results and know what my body actually needs or does not need. So I think that's important uh, to include as well. Yeah, so routine screenings are essential. Um, so your insurance will cover them. Uh, there are essential for our doctors to know which direction to take as far as medications, as far as lifestyle modifications and management. We can't know anything if we don't have any values or, or, or numbers to go by. So that's, and, and we do lab review as well. So if you are interested or, or want to know what each thing means, we have health educators who you can sit down with and we can discuss what each of those lab um, because it's all medical jargon, right? It just looks like numbers and letters to us. But if you'd like, we, we go over each one of those one at a time, and then we can explain to you what, what, how to better improve those results. So yes, please continue to do your routine and preventative screenings and not just um, your blood and, and laboratory testing. So yes. You guys don't get all the credit you deserve because you are doctors of pharmacology. You're, you're, it's not like you're a pharmacist and the doctors up here. You guys, you guys need more credit than you get. Don't get me started. Don't get me started. Don't get, I'm, I'm just kidding. So 
I will, I will say this, you know, so a lot of the primary care providers, um, they get about, now they get about one to two semesters of pharmacology. Whereas we as pharmacists, you know, we get four to eight years of pharmacology. So we have a little bit more better understanding of what happens once that medication touches your tongue or, or goes into your mouth all the way until it leaves your body. So please utilize us. Um, yes, now doc, um, pharmacists are um, doctoral degree holders. And so they are doctors. And so a lot of states, unfortunately, Hawaii is a, is a follow me state. So a lot of states on the continent are now integrating pharmacists as essential members of care teams. And so we'll, we'll get there here in Hawaii soon, but now it is, is a better time than any to incorporate and integrate a pharmacist into your own care team. So, yes. In order to analyze. Uh... So, so not yet. So um, she asked the question if whether pharmacists can actually order blood tests. So that is still a provider um, service but we can send recommendations. So uh, when we meet with patients and you know they're taking 13 meds and we can decrease that to 11 you know, or, or 10 you know, to decrease pill burden, we'll send an action plan or a recommendation to the provider. And oftentimes the providers will honor pharmacist recommendations. So yes, so even ordering labs, we can recommend that as well. Great question. No. I'm so sorry. Yes, there are certain pharmacies who are all about the numbers. And unfortunately, I know a lot of excellent pharmacists, uh, but they are basically bound by the, the corporation that they work for. So, uh, but you should definitely ask, always ask. When is your next brown bag event? Oh, so the, uh, yes, the, the um, I'm not sure. So we usually do it in March. Um, but I'm not sure when, because I believe there are, are three kupuna events over the next like six months or something. But ours is usually in March, and we do, we have we have our patients just schedule times. It takes about fifteen to twenty minutes, and then you sit with one of our health educators. So we have two registered dietitians, a registered nurse, and four pharmacists who can sit down with you. So, so if we wanted to. And if Maliola is not our pharmacy, are we able to bring in our meds and you? Yeah, you can come. We, oh. we we don't we don't see uh, organizations. You just come and and we'll do our best to help you the best we can. So, yeah, no hard feelings, guys. No hard feelings. Don't worry. Yes. Uh, so we're actually located in Wailuku. So we have two um two sites right now. So one in Maui Medical Group in Wailuku, and then also we're in the Cameron Center right below the hospital. So oftentimes if you guys were in the hospital and you guys needed discharge medicine, that probably was us that was preparing that for you, so. Oh, in, in the Wailuku, the uh, Wailuku Clinic. So right on the first floor, uh, right, right behind the check-in. Um, shameless plug, you know, if you do have um, any type of uh, barriers to medications we do offer free compliance packaging which is the the blister packs so if you have problems remembering to take your medicine or you're having issues on when we you we take your medicine and we put them in these little bubbles and you just you just push out the ones you know for morning afternoon or evening free of charge we also do we also do free home delivery um, if you're outside of the of the wailuku kahului area there are specific days that we deliver to you so we want to make sure that we can accommodate everyone on the island. So, uh, so the pharmacy's name is Maoli Ola Pharmacy. We're one of the we're we're part of a a dying breed here. You know, we're one of the last independent pharmacies on the island. Um, but it's M as in Mary, A U, L I, O L A, Pharmacy. Um, and we would be more than happy to assist you with your needs. We do. It's maliolapharmacy.com. Yes. Yeah. So it's... Go, go ahead. I'm sorry. So don't mean to... No, not to be a hippie. I used to smoke weed. I loved it. I, I quit. 
I, I still have friends who smoke with us the same age. But I, I've seen that. But would do you think marijuana is that okay? Or would that interact conflict with other, other medications or that's an excellent question. Excellent question because it's something that is now become kind of mainstream in, in our um treatment algorithms and it's something that we need to consider so there are different interactions that may um or may not affect you depending on your medication so always check so that's a that, so that has the taboo has been lifted so always always ask the question because the cbd portion your entire um um you know that cbd portion there are some uh interactions that may occur with medication so great question Come see us though, and and we'll review. Uh, just a quick insurance question. So, yes. are you a par pharmacy with like Humana, HMSA? Yep. So we we have um par contract agreements with all insurances, and I'm not allowed to promote it, but we are actually um a ancillary pharmacy for Kaiser. So if you have Kaiser insurance, you can fill with us as well. Our stipulation with our agreement is we just can't promote that. So, um, but we, but it's because we do a lot of work with the hospital and do all the discharge meds. So, yes. So, yes. What is the time of day? Because we go to do a five six medicine. Mm -hmm. you take them when you get up in the morning, or is it before you go to sleep at night? Excellent question. So, so his question was: at, Are there? Uh, or what is the importance of taking sp specific medicines at certain times of day? And it de depends on the medication. So there are certain medications that you should absolutely take at certain times. Others, it's better to take at the same time every day. So you have your body is exposed to it for 24 hours. So that's very medicine dependent. Take the medicine, you get a prescription. Some may be better in the morning, or some may be better in the night. Absolutely. So Ask your pharmacist. So that's an excellent question because there are medications that they can see your whole medicine profile and say, oh, well, I mean, if you're taking this blood pressure medicine in the morning, it may be beneficial to start this second blood pressure in the evening. So, so something like that. So, yeah, just ask. Be, feel free to ask. Excellent question. Thank you. Oh, OK. One more. All right. I love it. Yes. I don't smoke anymore. Mm -hmm. My my friends have offered uh, CBD cookies, and those are really good. But I, I I'm concerned would that possibly have an interaction with medicine eating it through a cookie? Yes. So so again, this is this is um uh fall prevention, right? We're in the fall prevention here. So just remember that. You definitely, uh, it could compromise your um, capacity or ability for balance. Um, but, but so the CBD is a very, very um, uh, potent uh, anti-inflammatory medication. But if there are any components of that THC, the psychoactive portion, so a lot of the CBD products, they don't require you to have, or, or the CBD products, there's a, a limit of how much THC that you can have and purchase over the counter without any type of license. So that THC portion is gonna compromise your potent, your balance or put you at an increased risk of falls because of the psychoactivity portion. And, and yeah, so just keep that in mind. Just bring your product and we can review it at the pharmacy, definitely. Excellent questions, yes. What's considered an empty stomach? So clinical fasting is eight hours. So if you're taking or if you're taking a thyroid medicine or a medicine that it requires you to take on an empty stomach, it's about eight hours. So um, clinically, and then same with fasting. So if you're taking a fasting blood uh, blood panel or something, if you are have not eaten for eight to twelve hours, then that's considered fasting. So same thing with empty stomach would be about eight hours. So it depends on the medication. So for a thyroid medicine, that's the most common one. We recommend about a, a one to two hour buffer, two hours if it's gonna be a vitamin.
definitely depends on the medication. Yes, so um, depending on the medication, you can take certain medicines at the same time, but it's hard to say if I don't know which medications they are. Great question though. Any other questions? Very stimulating, thank you very much. All right, we'll see you guys. Oh, one more, yes. Yeah. Oh, turmeric. Question about turmeric. I take that every day, the, the little orange bottle. I tend to take it in the mornings, and that's fine. I don't have any joint pain. Knees and elbows feel good. The doctor told me to uh, recommend a different brand, one that I think they have at Costco. So turmeric with black pepper. I started taking that, I switched over, and then all of a sudden I started experiencing joint pain. So I stopped that and went back to the original brand, the orange bottle. And it seems to be working fine. No more joint pain again. I've been sticking with that. So that's something where a doctor made the recommendation, and I felt it wasn't in my best interest. So I, 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 I didn't follow that recommendation. So for me as a patient, I, I felt empowered to make my own best decision. But it's, it's not just the doctor alone make those m make all those decisions with what's best, right? Very good. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's excellent. So, oh. Yes. Yes, so it's an activator. So the black pepper is supposed to help activate the curcumin, that the active ingredient in turmeric. But... I mean, again, every person, healthcare is so individualized, right? So you have to make sure that you're doing the best thing for you. And again, you know your body best. Although you see your doc, you can see your doctor every three months, you still know what works best for you and your body. So yes. Excellent. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day, guys.